So as humans, we want to live, we want to thrive. Survival is built into us. It's what we do. We look both ways before we cross the street to maximize our chance of survival. We wash our hands and brush our teeth to minimize our risk of infection. We have adopted antibiotics and immunizations, and those coupled with workplace safety and sanitation have tripled the average person's lifespan. Now, what we do to protect our health span and life will change radically. In the next few years, you're going to see a big shift in the medical paradigm. The technology that you'll see come to the forefront is gene therapy. In 2015, I took two experimental gene therapies to see if we could create a healthier world, if we could eradicate disease. It was a big plan to embark on. So why did I take two gene therapies when medical doctors today would consider me healthy for my age? I did it because I'm dying of a disease, and so are you. This disease is the process of biological aging. It underlies all of the diseases that we die of today. The things that you know of, like Alzheimer's, cancer, heart disease, COPD, and kidney failure, are all symptoms of the biological aging of the cell. As our cells get older, they become damaged, and this accumulation of damage creates the diseases that we eventually die from. Time is our most precious, powerful asset. Time to spend time with loved ones, with, to run and jump, to do all of the things that you love, to create big ideas, maybe to take gene therapies. But aging and disease take all of these things away from us. I know. I'm going to take you on a personal journey through my life and the experiences that I went through to lead me to taking two gene therapies. In 2013, my son was diagnosed with diabetes type 1. A boy with a fear of needles was thrown into a world of insulin injections and blood checks. As a parent, I can sum it up as pain, frustration, fear, and despair. This was a very new disease for me. At the hospital, they told me kids like my son were considered lucky because they had treatable diseases. Other kids were not so lucky. I looked around the hospital and I saw many patients who were having no option that would not leave the hospital. But wait, I had read the headlines. I had read that we had cured cancer about 100 times in mice. I had read that we can differentiate stem cells to create islet and beta cells to treat diseases like diabetes. We were growing organs from people's stem cells that they would not reject over time. And we were very near to a cure for things like AIDS. Why does it take so long to translate research to humans? Why do people die waiting for a cure? Why do we, as patients, not have the option to take a treatment? These questions drove me to the first quest in my life. It took me 42 years <laughs> to find something that got me up and got me excited, but this did it, so it's never too late. I found out that 150,000 people die every day and of those, 110,000 die of the diseases of aging alone. And it's projected by 2050 that aging will be the number one killer in all of the world, in every nation. I learned that hundreds of millions of people, both young and old, suffer from chronic disease every day. This grossly goes unnoticed in our media and our advertisement. We have very sick population. Take your prescription medicines, meditate, exercise, and diet. You die of these diseases anyway. We've got to do something new, and there's more urgency than ever. We're living in an aging world. 
By the year 2020, there'll be more people over the age of 65 than under the age of five. That means more people need health care, but less people will be there to fund that care. In some countries, we've already tipped the balance. We literally have one payer standing under five persons that need care. In 2003, the first human genome was finally run, and we had our first glimpse at the genes that define us as a species. And now we are learning which genes define our health span and our life span as well. This brought the, this new technology of gene therapy to the forefront. It allowed us to move exponentially fast towards medical cures. And as we speak, there are eight medical cures in the pipeline for something called monogenic disease, meaning if you have a one single gene mutation, there very likely will be a cure in the pipeline for you. Two of the, the gene therapies that you see here are actually past gene therapies, lipoprotein lipase deficiency and SCID, severe combined immune deficiency, or boy in the bubble disease. It's one treatment to a cure. So what we would like to do is we would like to take this technology and start to treat complex disease, things like autoimmune disease and aging. So why do we think that lifespan is malleable? Why do we think that we can actually create a healthier population out of you? These are our Methuselah organisms. Since the 1970s, we found out that lifespan is actually malleable. And since then, we've extended the lifespan of worms by 11 times, flies by six, certain fish by four times, and mice by five times. And these animals not only live a multitude longer than their natural lifespan, but they are healthy and vigorous as well. But what about humans? These are the new hallmarks of aging. These, this, these hallmarks here are driving industry to new cures. Now medicine is behind what is actually driving the diseases that we're dying of for both children and adults. These include things like genomic instability, telomere attrition, mitochondrial dysfunction. Mitochondria are little cells, organelles in your, in your cells, and they create energy for your cell. Okay, um, stem cell depletion. Over time, you actually uh, have less stem cells available for your body to use, and your body has a problem communicating with those cells. So these are the type of things that we want to look at. Senescent cells. Senescent cells are cells that no longer divide. They've grown old, and they've decided not to go through apoptosis, which is cellular death, and instead they sit inside your body, and they cause inflammation. Companies are running to eradicate these cells from your body or fix the problems that are happening inside of them. And aging has been reversed now in animals. The problem is, is that we are very risk adverse in moving to humans. Regulations are set very high. And people fear experimental medicine. To address this, in 2015, I created a company called BioViva. BioViva is a company that is there to translate medicines to patients, to bridge the gap between biomedical research and the clinic. To launch the company, I took two of the most promising gene therapies. I thought it was the most ethical thing to do, that I should take them before our patients took them. I simply believed that companies should take their own medicine. I took two gene therapies. One gene therapy was designed to lengthen my telomeres. So telomeres are the caps at the ends of your chromosomes. And as your cells divide, they become shorter and shorter. And as our telomeres get shorter, we there are problems like genomic instability, OK? And your cells have a limit on how many times they can divide. And when your telomeres are a certain length, certain shortness, they actually go and they become senescent cells. And we already talked about that. They become angry cells that then send off inflammatory markers to other cells around them. So this is a very promising gene therapy. This is the only gene therapy on the planet that's reversed aging in animals twice. 
and it was at every biomarker imaginable, so it was very exciting. The second gene therapy was a myostatin inhibitor. I don't know if you've heard that terminology, but that means it increases your muscle mass. Yeah, it, we can pump you up, we can make you stronger, okay? And it really works. Actually, safety and efficacy in humans with this gene therapy has already passed, but we would like to use it with patients with something called sarcopenia. And this is muscle loss over time. So as we age, we become more and more frail. And you probably know someone who's fallen down and broken their hip, or had to move into a house with a single layer, um, no more stairs, they can't play tennis anymore, things like this. We want to create active, viable people to stimulate the economy. You have to remember that all of the aging diseases singularly are a trillion dollar disorder for the world globally every year. So I took these two therapies, and what did we see? I, th I think this is what you're most interested in. In my T lymphocytes, which is uh, white blood cells, uh, we saw a 600 base pair increase, which is fantastic. And as far as aging goes, that's about equivalent to putting 20 years back on my immune system. We saw an increase in muscle mass and a de decrease in intramuscular fat. Uh, this is a good sign that um, I would be protected against things like frailty and diabetes type 2. We saw a six-fold decrease in my C-reactive proteins, which were already relatively low due to my age uh, before the therapy, but very, very low after the therapy. C-reactive proteins, if they were high, would be an indication for things like cancer and inflammation in the body. So we were very happy to see that. We also saw a, a very decreased risk of cancer. So, you, so when you do a cancer test, it doesn't say yes or no. It just says, for your age, are you an average, above average, or very low? And I'm very low risk of cancer, and this was very important. We also did whole body MRI imaging to ensure that all of my organs were, were healthy and in great shape and that there was no growths in my body. And I past that with flying colors. We also saw a 25% reduction in blood glucose, uh, which is fantastic and reflects what we saw with the muscle increase, uh, meaning again, maybe protection against things like diabetes type two. And we saw a 50% reduction in triglyceride levels, which means better heart health. So immunizations and antibiotics in the 20th century radically changed the paradigm of health. We believe that gene therapies will be given like immunizations in the future, preventing you from getting sick to begin with. This is where we have the most cost savings, and this is where we have the ability to keep people viable and active longer. We really have to decide what kind of world we want to live in. Do we want to live in a world that we're consigned to suffering, things like Alzheimer's, heart disease, and cancer? Or do we want to live in a world where we lift each other up, bring new technology in, and see what we can do with it? I believe it's time to design our evolution instead of waiting for nature to decide our fate. Simply, it's time for an upgrade. I predict that in 15 years, we'll be using these technologies much like putting an app on our phone. We'll be designing the genes that we want for our future for our activity and our lifestyle. Whether we're going to Mars or staying on Earth or decide to go live on a polar cap or right around the equator, we'll be able to modify ourselves for those needs. BioViva will start now. We're opening clinics this year that offer people access to experimental therapies that show much more promise than any of the drugs we've ever had in the past. So, even though I have a few extra copies of genes in my cells, I'm still just like you. I want to live and I want to thrive. Thank you.